Hello and welcome. My name is Michelle Wolf, and you are listening to the Move Forward podcast. Each week, we will be talking about living life to the fullest and making the intentional choice to move past trauma. I'm a registered massage therapist, a whole food lover with farm roots. It's important to slow down, take time for healing, and to incorporate proper nourishment through fitness, nutrition, lifestyle, and mindset. During this journey, I'll be speaking openly about my personal experiences with cancer, loss of a loved one, wellness, and infectious optimism. Plus, you'll get to hear interviews with many truly inspirational and informative guests. We'll tackle each challenge with courage and care. Thank you for joining us on a mission to move forward in body, mind, and soul. Now let's begin. Hello and welcome to my very first episode podcast. Thank you so much for listening and I am just so excited to get started to share my story, my journey with all of you and I can't wait to also have and to meet some incredible guests on this show and to share their journey and to learn from their message and and share it with all of you. So I'm just I'm just so excited for this. So thank you again for you all joining and let's get started. Um, for today, I thought I would share with you a little bit about myself and share with you my journey. And that's kind of what this podcast is going to be about. I am looking to share other people's stories and messages about what they've been through, the hardships, the tragedy, the rough times, and the good times, and how it has shaped them to be who they are now, and how it has helped them become who they are and become successful. Possibly that is the reason of why they have succeeded in life or started a business or um, moved on from a relationship or who knows what it is. There's an array of things that could have got them to where they are today. But I am so excited to be sharing the stories and the journey of so many individuals, including my own. So for today, let's get started. I'm going to give you just a quick brief um, intro of my journey. I know throughout all these different episodes, I will definitely be giving you a little bit more timbits here and there and and some more insight of my life and my journey. But for today, I thought I'd just give you a little, a little peek inside. So I was born and raised on a farm near a small town called Mitchell in Ontario, Canada. And I was raised by my mom and my dad, my sister and older brother. And we had a pretty good life. I know looking back at it now, my dad definitely had many struggles himself, losing his father at the age 15, taking over the family farm with his brother. And, you know, he just wanted to give us everything that he didn't have. And he wanted to provide as best as he could. So he worked hard and he succeeded. And I am so very proud of him. Uh, but I know the beginning was not easy. Uh, but otherwise, we definitely had a very loving family. We were involved in a lot of activities and sports and adventures. And I had um, a very large family. My mom has eight siblings. My dad has six, I, I believe. Um, and with that, obviously, I have many, many cousins, which is which is pretty cool. It was it was like an extended, incredible um, family, and. We had a lot of fun, definitely. Now, at the age of eight, sadly, my mom was diagnosed with stage four cancer and she passed away. So this was obviously a very big life-changing experience. And especially for myself being only eight years old, it's such a young age to go through such a traumatic life-changing experience and you know I can dwell on all the negative things that I went through and you know all the sad experiences I had and moments and you know not having my mom there on Mother's Day and 
birthdays and all those things. But for today, I wanted to chat more about the positive things. So I'm not trying to say that I would want, you know, if I could change things, I would definitely go back and I would prefer her to be here and I would prefer to have her with us in our lives and grow up with her. However, that wasn't the case. And so I look at that experience and I recognize that any major experience, tragedy, loss, um, or change in your life will have an effect on who you are, how you deal with things, and what you become and who you are. So with that, I have recognized that, you know, it definitely made me grow up a lot quicker than I likely would have. And I am absolutely 100% more independent than a lot of people that I know, likely because I had to be. I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a mother who would pick up after me and who would um, tell me what was right or wrong or when to do this or when to do that, Um, you know, kind of give me a little bit more structure or guidance. Um, Yes, I did have that for the first eight years of my life. Absolutely. Um, But then going through losing my mom and and having to change things, you know, it changed our family dynamic. There was sadness. There was um, a change, for sure, in our in our family. So, with that, um, and with it being that I lost my mom from cancer, I definitely did notice that right from the beginning. I took a look at that and I wondered what the heck. And why did she get cancer? And what is cancer? And how do I do everything in my power to prevent getting cancer? Because I don't want to die. I didn't want to die. I was a young girl. And so from there, I started doing research and teaching myself about the disease and about the possibilities of what could have happened or how it could have happened or how I could prevent this. And What I found was a lot of it had to do with um, lifestyle, your choices of your diet and your stress levels and your sleep and, um, you know, many different array of things it could possibly be. There is no specific one thing that it could be. Um, But I definitely learned a lot over the years with my research and I made a few major life-changing or a few major health decisions. Um, when I was in grade seven, I decided I want to be, I wanted to be a vegetarian. And I did this because I was, what I lived on a farm. We had pigs at the time. Um, and I remember watching my brother giving the pig antibiotics And I had made the choice not to take medication as much as possible, um, unless it was like a life-threatening issue, which really never came about for me. Um, But I just remember thinking, if I choose not to have it, if I choose not to take medication, but these animals are being infused with these medications, why would I be eating the animals that have that medication inside of them? So it really made me think about what I was eating, what I was putting in my mouth, and perhaps maybe making better choices and learning about exactly what those things do to me uh, before I actually ingest them. So that started me and my little vegetarian journey. Now, I stopped eating red meat then at grade 7, and then I believe I was probably about 19 when I decided to completely commit to vegetarianism. Um, I do eat eggs and some dairy or goat cheese, that sort of thing every once in a while. Um, For the most part, I am plant-based, but I, like I said, I do have some eggs and things. Um, But I'm just very aware of what I'm putting in my body and I am so excited to share it with other people and teach others and also just, just incorporate it into my lifestyle as much as possible. So on that note... Um, I definitely also traveled 
um, when I was 18 years old, I just decided there was a huge world out there that I knew nothing about coming from such a small town. And I had, I mean, I don't think we had one, I think we had one black person in my class of all um, white Caucasians. And I think one Asian, um, which is just the way that it is on a small town farm um, area. So I wanted to see the world. So I moved to Spain, lived with a family there for six months, fell in love with skiing because we made a trip to Andorra. And I decided to move to Banff, Alberta, lived out there for a year. And then I came home and I decided to become a massage therapist. So I am a registered massage therapist, and I do still practice that here in Toronto, Ontario. And then I moved to Australia for two years, and then back to my hometown, started my own business, was very successful, and really loved learning and um, treating and healing individuals. Um, But then I moved to Toronto, Ontario, where I now reside. And I started working at a neurological rehab facility about, I want to say, seven years ago now. And there I learned a lot. I mean, I was working in a, it was a private, it's a private facility. So it's not like a hospital where they have to work inside that box, you know, with so many safety precautions. This was Um, completely private so we definitely pushed individuals and I just learned so much it was it was an incredible experience and I'm forever thankful Um, now that being said there was definitely some politics that went on as there tend to be in most um, businesses Ever since I first started working at this new facility, I just knew that this would be the place that I would be for the rest of my life. So I had been traveling for the last how many years, going from country to country, and I was the type of person where, not that I would get bored, but I just, I would want to change. And with this facility and the people who I worked with and what I was learning, I just knew I'd be here forever. Um, But unfortunately, with those politics, it did come to an end. I did realize that I was working for individuals and building a business and working my butt off for them. Meanwhile, I was a very hardworking, passionate person. And it was time for me to finally focus on myself and focus on dreams that were going to get me far enough in life that I felt comfortable with and that I was proud of myself and that I got to do what I wanted to do and that I would be happy every day waking up doing exactly what I want to do. And so here we are now. And after going through a year of figuring out what I want to do next and where I want to go and what type of business I want to build, and I'm, I'm still working on that. However, um, for the last two years, I have been listening to podcasts and I have been inspired. I have learned so many incredible things and I have grown as an individual all through listening to podcasts. So if you are new to the podcast world, welcome. It is incredible the things you can learn. And there's just so many wonderful, knowledgeable human beings out there putting out so much information. And I just knew that it was time for myself to put a lot of that information out there. Being in the health industry, I was I'm working with individuals on a daily and I find myself motivating them and coaching them through life skills and um, a lot of them are going through a lot of traumatic, serious situations, whether they've got a spinal cord injury and they can't walk anymore or a stroke or a cancer patient. Um, I find that these people are coming to me with the need of information as well as needing guidance and support. And um, so here we are. I 
I enjoy that. I enjoy working with my clients, but that's on an individual basis. And I just knew there was a better way or maybe just another way to not only focus on one individual at a time, but to focus on hundreds or thousands or who knows one day, maybe millions of people that I could be helping them go through these traumatic and life-changing major situations in their lives. So I am so excited to continue to share my story, continue to share other people's stories, and hopefully show you that, you know, we go through these situations in our lives all the time. Everybody has a story. Everybody. And, you know, you can even look at my story being a young girl losing her mother. Absolutely 100%. It was terrible. And I would not wish that on anyone. However, that's my story. And I know that I had a very loving, incredible family outside of that. And, you know, there are people who grow up in homes that are violent and abusive. And perhaps they grew up with no parents at all. Um, perhaps they grew up on the streets. Um, so, you know, my story, as much as it's, it's, it's sad, has sad pieces of it. Um, I definitely did have a good life. And I'm very, very thankful for that. And I look at my journey and what I went through, and I build on that. And I would just love to inspire so many more individuals out there. And I just want you to know that you're not alone. And there is somebody else out there who is likely going through a similar situation. And When I look back and I recognize that it wasn't just me and it wasn't just my family, it was a community of people coming together, supporting us. I had my neighbors who would bring food. We had we had our freezer filled for uh, uh, the first year. You know, it was filled with meals. And up to this day, my dad and my family back home are still getting pies, um, canned peaches and pears and things from my neighbors. And shout out to Carol Seaman. You are an incredible human being. I love you so much. And I'm so thankful for your support and your delicious pies and um, birthday cards and everybody, my community, you... Just it, it it was amazing and it definitely, definitely helped guide me to be a good person. And so I am so excited to share that with the rest of the world. So shout out to all of you who are going through challenging times right now. I understand it's difficult in the moment and often we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. But I want to remind you that... There is a light at the end of the tunnel if you so choose to find it. And a lot of the times I don't think we realize that it is up to us. Yes, it is important to have a community around you. And I strongly suggest you find those individuals who can help you through these tough times. But at the end of the day, it is up to you to make a decision whether you want to or whether you don't want to wake up and move forward and find the good in life. You know, you could continue with life being sad, being disappointed, maybe angry or furious at your circumstances, but that is solely your decision on how you feel. And I am a strong believer that it is up to you to make that choice if you want to be happy, if you want to move forward, And what type of life you want to have, you can design that solely on on what you want. Make a plan, have some healthy habits in your life, and move forward. Make the choice and move forward to live. So... I think I'm going to end it at that. Um, I definitely have so much more to share with you guys and we will continue shortly. But that is the brief overview of my life uh, growing up and my losing my mom has definitely shaped me to be the, the independent person that I am. And I have lived my life, you know, one day at a time and also living it to the best because 
you know, what re- whatever religion you are, today is today. This life is the one life we have, and why not live it wonderfully? And um, I am just sending so much love and support. Big hugs to all of you out there. And I look forward to sharing some more of my story. And so basically, these days, I am working on podcasts. I'm working on a little bit of YouTube here and there. I've got my blog. I share delicious, healthy recipes on my blog, as well as other health and wellness there. It is my part-time job at the moment because I am full-time massage therapist. So it will definitely get more. I will definitely have more of that content coming at you, hopefully sooner than later. Um, But for now, I am just thrilled to have you all listening. Please, please, please share this with anyone who you think it could help. And I'm also looking for other individuals who are out there who have gone through traumatic incidences and tragedy, um, sorrow, whichever, um, and perhaps they have designed a business or just moved forward in a way that you think is inspiring and that other people should hear about. So please pass them along my way and hopefully I can contact them and Um, in and um, interview them and share their message to hopefully help other incredible individuals out there who are needing that help so until then and for today sending that love out to all of you thank you again love you so much have a wonderful day thank you so much for spending your time with me and the move forward podcast I am extremely grateful to each of you. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment to share this episode with someone you think would benefit. Also, if you could please leave an honest review by going to iTunes and leaving your thoughts and questions. Let us know what you would like to hear more of so we can continue to inspire and share with the world. Again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I am forever grateful for this community that we are building and the individuals we are helping. Until next time, we hope you continue to move forward by choosing to move your body, your mind, and your soul. Thanks, guys.